Hello, my sweet friends. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jay, and y'all know the deal. Today, guys, it's going to be a very relaxed video, very relaxed vlog, if you will. I will not be detailing in depth, at least, what I'm reading this weekend. What I will be doing is rearranging my shelves. You can probably see them behind me. And I have another shelf right in front of me to the right here. Guys, it's awful. They're in a state of such disrepair. Not even disrepair, because they're the shelves themselves are fine, but the books are starting to just like it's it's getting to me. So for one, one of the reasons I want to rearrange my bookshelves is that almost none of my horror books are in the shelf behind me where I can easily access them. They are in the shelf here, which I will show you in a little bit and they're not very easily accessible because I'm an idiot and I don't know what I was thinking. When I left YouTube for that long break last year, I thought to hell with my books, to hell with my horror, because um, I was just tired. <laughs> I was not in the best mental health state. Um, so I didn't do anything with the books. Um, and I pursued other interests in the meanwhile. Also, if you hear like extraneous sounds it's because I'm carrying a box here because I have something to show you but before I get to that yeah all my horror books are over here in the sh bookshelf here that I love but I can't access them easily so I'd like to transfer all of my horror books here and there aren't that many but they are growing um, in number because I am deep within the horror genre this year um, basically everything I've bought recently is horror um, with a few exceptions so as you can imagine, the collection is growing. And I know for a fact that I have enough space on my bookshelves, but I'm not using them wisely. Mostly because I have a lot of frickin' knickknacks. And I'm, I'm sort of tired of the mess. I kind of, I'm sort of a cluttered person, to, much to my boyfriend's chagrin. Um, and I'm trying to slowly get better at that. I have like little routines set in place to sort of like um, help me get out of the mode of being cluttered. Also, is this a mosquito bite? Oh no. Yeah, very itchy. Ouch. It is the depth of the southern summer right now and it makes me want to die. It's like over 90 degrees and I hate it so much and there are a million bugs. Anyway, so that's the goal of this weekend is to rearrange my bookshelves so that they don't drive me freaking nuts. Um, and also right now I'm going to do a little unboxing. Um, so I found out that if you ask for ARCs, advanced reader copies, then you will get ARCs. And that is very exciting. Also, sorry for the lighting change. Um, it is like raining outside um, and I can't decide whether it wants to be the cloudy kind of rain or the sunny kind of rain. Anyway, yeah, so I reached out to Tor Nightfire Publishing, which is an extension of Tor Publishing, which is an extension of Macmillan Publishing. Um, but Tor Nightfire, if you're familiar with Tor Publishing, you probably know that they do a lot of big name um, science fiction and fantasy titles. That's their big thing is science fiction and fantasy. And Tor Nightfire I think is relatively new but they are doing um, a lot of thriller and suspense and horror novels and I was like you know what that is for me. So under the advice of a good friend on Bookstagram I decided to reach out and see if they would send me some advanced reader copies and they sure as shit did and I'm very excited because I asked for two books in particular one they said is um it's not fully like assembled yet as a book I guess it's um I don't know it's coming out in September so I'm surprised that they don't have the physical book yet but whatever um I got approved for it um as an ebook but I don't really like reading ebooks so I thought I'd try they did send me the second book that I asked for and I did ask them for any other books that they would like to send um because I will read and review them so here we are. Let me show you the books that I got. Okay, dispense with the paper. Alrighty. I'm kind of excited to see this because I didn't expect this in my box. Um, Slewfoot I talked about in my August TBR video. 
it's linked in the description below if you want to check it out um but this is basically about the um about a puritan village and right outside the puritan village in connecticut a dark demon slash devil awakens in a mysterious forest wood area in 1666 um and so in, you know shenanigans ensue with this devil slash demon um and i guess the devil slash demon is called slewfoot um they when i asked about this they told me that they just didn't have a physical copy yet so i guess that this is their way of like you know doing what they can which i really appreciate um yeah and also look at these illustrations so the writer Brahm, um, he is known for his art. I have another book by him, Krampus, which I have not fully read yet because I don't know why. I don't know why. Something's defective in me because I love Krampus and I don't know why I've dragged my feet on that book. Um, but yeah, very excited about this. Definitely will read that. All right. The next book is Summer Suns by Lee Mandelo. I haven't even heard of this, but it looks amazing. The um, review on the front says a southern summer in book form, hot and hungry and haunting. I could not put it down by Alex E. Harrow. Now Alex E. Harrow is one of my new favorite authors. I read her book The Once and Future Witches and um, could not put it down. I devoured it. It is one of my favorite books of all time now. You should check it out. Um, all right, so I'll just read the back since I really don't know anything about these books and I just got this package in the mail. Um, Andrew and Eddie did everything together. Best friends bonded more deeply than brothers until Eddie left Andrew behind to start his graduate program at Vanderbilt. Six months later, only days after Andrew was to join him in Nashville, Eddie dies of an apparent suicide. He leaves Andrew at a horrible inheritance, a roommate he doesn't know, friends he never asked for, and a gruesome phantom that hungers for him. That sounds awesome. I like the South. I like phantoms that hunger for people. So that's cool. I'm excited about this. This looks great. And the like image, it's like a, a skeleton hand reaching for a normal person's hand. I don't know. It looks great. I'm excited for that. Ooh, this looks creepy. Um, okay. So this is Nothing But Black and Teeth by Cassandra Kaw. All right. And the front review is by Paul Tremblay, which I like Paul Tremblay. Sharp, playful, and nasty as hell. Well, we like that. We like nasty as hell. Oh, okay. There's like nothing here. Um, oh, well, I don't know what. Let me see if I can find my phone so I can do a review for y'all found my phone also don't know why i said review i didn't mean review also if you hear other weird noises i have a woodwick candle burning and it sort of sounds like it's farting so excuse me for that so it looks like these are a collection of oh oh it's a haunted house tale steeped in Japanese folklore and full of devastating twists. Well, that's cool. I don't need to know any more. That sounds amazing. Haunted houses, Japanese folklore. That's literally everything I love. Heck yeah. Can I drop everything and just read this right now? Okay, we're not even gonna think about that because I have things that I need to get through before I just drop everything. I'm so excited look oh it's certain dark things by sylvia moreno garcia i just finished reading mexican gothic and loved it ah this is her vampire book her new one welcome to mexico city an oasis in a sea of vampires domingo a lonely street kid is just trying to survive when a jaded vampire on the run swoops into his life atl adel uh, I don't know. That's a name, I guess. Otto, the descendant of Aztec blood drinkers, is smart, beautiful, and dangerous. Domingo is mesmerized. Otto needs to quickly escape the city far from the rival narco vampire clan, relentlessly pursuing her. Her plan does not include Domingo, but Otto finds herself warming up to the young man and his undeniable charm. As the trail of corpses stretches behind them, local cops and crime bosses start closing in. Vampires, humans, cops, and criminals collide in the dark streets of Mexico City. Do Otto and Domingo stand a chance of making it out alive, or will the city devour them all? It sounds very like 
Noir. Um, does that make sense? Am I even using that right? You know, it sounds like very like um, black and white detective sort of movie, but with vampires. That's exciting. Ah, yeah, that sounds great. Ooh, okay. This is the book that I asked for as well as Slewfoot, The Last House on Le Needless Street by P blah, 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 by Katrina Ward. Um, oh, okay. This is another one of those things where they don't have a description on the back. Love that. Probably because it's an art. So let me find the description. Okay. In a boarded up house on a dead end street at the edge of the wild Washington woods lives a family of three. Okay. I love a Pacific Northwest setting. That's great. A teenage girl who isn't allowed outside, not after the last time. A man who drinks alone in front of his TV, trying to ignore the gaps in his memory. And a house cat who loves napping and reading the Bible. Um, an unspeakable secret binds them together, but when a new neighbor moves in next door, what is buried out among the birch trees may come back to haunt them all. Well then, this sounds wonderful. Um, lots of like, really cool reviews joe hill paul tremblay alex north adam neville this is gonna be good this sounds fantastic i also not gonna lie i feel like i've finally gotten my like booktuber bookstagrammer street cred by getting arcs i don't have a whole lot of arcs I actually don't think I have any arcs. <laughs> um, I just never like jumped on that train of trying to get arcs. Um, so yeah, I feel good. I feel really good about this. So these are the books that I'm going to have to add to my shelves momentarily. <laughs> so I will start planning my bookshelves and I will come back to you in a little bit and give you a tour. So I'll be right back. Okay. Welcome to my shit show of an office. Here is my desk. It normally does not have this much shit on it, but that's what it is right now. This is my little altar because I'm a little witchy, but it's a lot right now. Look at all my crystals. Um, they're all just, yeah, it's a lot. I know, I know, I am a mess. And here is a nice big stack of books just sitting here. Um, here is one shelf that is sort of, like I said, not necessarily in disrepair, but disrepair. Um, these are my main shelves, the one you always see behind me. Um, it's kind of a mess right now. Oh, hi doggy, hi doggy dog, yes, hello. <laughs> um, it, I know this is like shockingly a mess, but this is why I'm in here today. So these shelves typically house all of my fantasy middle grade, um, YA, and adult fantasy books. Um, I just have a lot of fantasy and I continue to acquire fantasy because I like fantasy. Um, and a lot of these I've not read. Um, I've heard from many people that they separate their read and unread books. That's just not an option for me because I most of these I've not read. But yes, these are my main shelves that you tend to see behind me. Let me show you all my horror books. So there's quite a few in this, these stacks here. Um, and there are some here, there's some in here, there's some in here. There are lots of candles that I need to throw away because I thought I would make some at some point. There's just a lot. Um, one of my posters fell down, so I need to retape that. Um, and then I have another shelf that is actually in the living room with other books, um, which I will also have to sort of by default rearrange. So let me show you that. So this is my other bookshelf in the living room. This has a lot of fantasy. It also has quite a bit of horror um, here. Um, and more fantasy over here, plants. Um, it is also in a state of disrepair because, you know, as a booktuber, I have to constantly deal with my books. And I also have a bookstagram, so I take a lot of pictures, so they're constantly being shifted. So I just need to arrange my books in such a way that makes sense for how I conduct my booktube and bookstagram. What my biggest thing right now is that I want to get my horror books on here, prior prioritize them, and shift over some of my fantasy books to maybe the um, shelf 
outside there. So we will see how this goes. So here is another thing that is kind of an issue. Um, I have a lot of knickknacks, as you can see. Um, I don't want to have a lot of knickknacks anymore. So I'm probably going to box a lot of this stuff up and just put it towards a goodwill contribution. Um, I am someone who is not, I'm not a hoarder. I, I am a bit of a hoarder, but what I'm trying to say is that I don't have a problem like letting go of things. When I've decided that I want to let go of things, I'm almost a little too quick to let go of things. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna get rid of a lot of stuff. I'm hoping I want to be able to see my books and not be crowded with a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and I think it'll be good for my bookstagram and my booktube channel, booktube channel, to be able to actually see the books and not necessarily all the knickknacks. So I'm going to try and keep, be very intentional with the knickknacks. Um, so yeah, let's, let's just get started. I'm put up with changes. Come pick me up cause I just want to see the light. I wanna be weightless Teach me to fly, I won't be coming down Could somebody wake me up? I don't wanna be here and let the world pass me by yeah. I just see her face where Ever I look, she's standing in the crowd So I let go, let go I don't want to, but I'm gonna try when she Okay, so here's another thing. I don't really understand how I ought to like arrange my books. Um, I'm just thinking maybe I want to do color too as well as genre and author. The nice thing about horror is that there are not a whole lot of series. There's a lot of standalones so I can actually arrange them by color or yeah color and size if I wanted to. It wouldn't be hard um, and the only real authors I have a lot of are Nick Cutter and Stephen King um, in terms of horror and maybe Paul Tremblay. Um, I just happen to constantly pick up their books even though I haven't read a whole lot of them so maybe we'll start with black books seems to be a common theme in horror I'm so sick of waiting and getting too restless to be in this dusty town I've heard of this place where people forget and you get another try Also, the nice thing is that Grady Hendrix tends to stick to a black theme, so we're here for that. Gonna try when she left me, yeah, but a little bit inside, you know, you know, maybe things are gonna be alright. Cause I just wanna see the light. Yeah, I just wanna see the light. Okay, so here is the first shelf done. It's looking pretty good. It's got all, well, like the main color is black here. 
um, and I also told myself that I would put them in order of like um, author and size. And here, so I have my two Jack Ketchum books that I literally just acquired. And then I've got um, two Stephen King books here. Um, and then two John Belair's books, some Brian Keene, some Matt Hayward. Matt Hayward, I'm trying to figure out if I want to keep or not. He's in a bit of trouble right now. He, like, something weird happened. I won't get into the specifics, you can research for yourself, but yeah, um, not a very savory character right now in the horror community. I don't know if things have changed, but he'll go on my shelf for right now and we'll see where that takes us. But yeah, so this is Black Shelf done. I don't know if I'm going to stack books like horizontally here or not. We'll see. Um, but we're going to move on to this shelf, which I think we're going to do red. in my bones I could feel it in my veins Hands in the sky I can feel the winds of change You live and you learn Okay, so you can see behind me that the red shelf is happening. However, I'm running out of red horror books. <laughs> Um, so we're just gonna see where it takes us and see this is where I sort of start to lose a little hope when it comes to my aesthetic building sort of capabilities because I'm not very good at this um, so we'll see we'll just we'll just try to clean things up not put a lot of pressure on myself for everything to be aesthetic but we're gonna try Okay, so the red shelf is looking good. It's like red-ish, red-ish. <laughs> but you know, things are looking neater. It's nice to have most of my horror collection all in one area, accessible. Um, but here's the problem. I still have more horror. This is, um, a lot of it is like horror and horror adjacent, but I don't know what to do do with them color scheme wise so we're just gonna wing it i think i hope i've seen enough to make something right make up for what i lost i was down but things are low post on Instagram where they like did a little rainbow shelf and that's what I'm trying to do right now um, with this like third one here that is sort of just a mismatch of things um, but yeah we're getting there also I keep finding like these amazing books that I forgot like I love collecting these like old school compilations of ghost stories yeah this is the best ghost stories ever by Scholastic Classics. Um, it probably is the best collection ever, but yeah. Caught by surprise by you Want you to make my heart feel as much as I know it should I wanna get high on Caught by surprise by Want you to make my heart feel as much as I know it should. Okay, things are looking good. Here is like the makeshift rainbow shelf. Um, so I was looking at a post and it went from like dark to reds to yellows to greens to blues and then on to like the lighter colors oh yikes this is weird i should move that i'm not feeling that there um but yeah it's looking good um the like just being able to see my books is really really cozy 
So I'm really loving that. I wasn't expecting to just be able to see my, to just love being able to see my books. But yeah, let's keep going. Okay, so we've got the fourth shelf here done. I know that this is not necessarily the most useful, um, this is not the best way to use the space, but I wanted to finish out my horror and like thriller section in a full kind of way. And I never get to really see, even see these comics that I pick up mostly from like horror conventions. So I thought I'd display them like this. I don't know, it's looking pretty good. Like from for an overall sort of perspective, it looks pretty solid. Um, and I think down here is where I'll maybe put some knickknacks. I'll dot some along up on these shelves, but I really wanna keep them as clean as possible. So now I have this whole like bottom section down here that I have cleaned. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my very beloved Harry Potter series um, down here as well with um, my Twilight books just because they're not going into exile because they're down here, all books. I love all my books. But because I have read them all and they are purely up for like nostalgia purposes, they're just gonna be moved down to the bottom shelf because I want, I do think I want to replicate the color coordination for my fantasy books on this side. So we're gonna do that. I'm probably not gonna film much of that because it's down here and I just don't really have the room to show you that, but I wanted to let you know. Also, my skeleton is resting on a pile of boxes that I need to clean up because I am a shit show of a person. That's okay though. Nobody's like you. You are not normal at all. No. I feel like I want to. Let down my guard and just fall Cause someone was before you Let someone let me go This time I must know for sure Cause someone was before you Let someone let me go But I just need to be sure Some say love's not for the bitter ones Some say love will only bring you down Alrighty, y'all. I'm sorry that I look a hot mess. I'm taking a quick little break. Grabbed myself a nectarine because I had the choice between a cinnamon roll and fruit. Mm, trying to be a healthy person today. Um, we're moving quite along on the fantasy side of my shelves. Um, I'm trying not to work in absolutes because this is not a one afternoon kind of job. I have a lot of books um, and that sounds like really stupid, but I every time I take them off my shelves to rearrange, I realize how many I actually have. And at the same time, I also realize how little I have, like how much more I want. Um, if I had my way, um, if we had space, I would have um, but I did want to tell you that I'm listening on my phone, The Ruins by Scott Smith. It is interesting. I absolutely love the movie. Um, and I have a friend who recommends the book in, in, entirely and she hates the movie. And I just think, ah, <laughs> uh, that's such an interesting opinion because everyone I've known really loves the movie, including myself. The book itself is a slower. It is very much a character study. There's a lot of talking of backstories and childhood stories for the characters. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not riveted by it, but it's good reading. Um, I might switch to something else because it's kind of making me a little sleepy. I don't know. It's not my favorite so far. If I had to rate it, it's probably like a solid three. Not the worst, not the best. Um, but I did want to show you, just moving the whole tripod, but look how 
nice this like yellow shelf is. I'll show it to you better once I finish a couple more things, but um, yeah, it's, it's coming along guys. All righty, friends. It is much, much later. Um, yeah, I kind of just got lost in my everyday momentum and forgot to update you with my bookshelf, like, you know, how it looks like after I arrange them. So I'm going to take you through what my bookshelves look like right now. I even arranged another bookshelf out in my living room. And this is, I'm going to treat this as a bookshelf tour. Um, I still have many other books that are not like your typical um, fantasy or horror books, like novels. They're not your typical novels or they don't fit into any real category within my shelves um, that I still need to arrange. And that's going to be saved for like another freaking day, maybe another year. Um, Especially because as I continue to acquire books, that other shelf that I'm not going to show you because it's a hot mess, it will fill out on its own. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the overall look of the shelves as they are now. And I'm going to take you quickly shelf by shelf and just do some quick like highlights of my favorite books. Because a lot of these books I haven't read. I'm pretty sure the amount of books that I have read are a much lower number than the books that I need to read. Um, so let's get into it okie dokie so this is the top shelf um this is my um horror section we're gonna go down we're gonna go through all of my horror books or most of them at least a lot of these i have not read um here's my really cute bury me with books sign from sinister signs um so a lot of these I actually haven't read, but of the ones that I have, I will say that Stephen King's The Shining is going to be probably one of my favorite books. Um, Stephen King's Salem's Lot was a fucking disgrace. I don't know why. That's just my opinion. You're welcome to dif differentiate or dif differ. I can't even talk because I hated it so much. Um, it was just so slow and so boring and not scary. But, um, let's see. And we have House of Leaves here, which I also hated. Another book that I really loved is Don't Turn Out the Lights. This is like a middle grade compilation of scary stories by some really adult authors. Um, and I really enjoyed that. Brought me back to my childhood. And then here, um, are the two John Belair's books I have. Um, oh my god, it's so it's like in here anyway um this book is the house with um a clock in its walls this was made into a movie with jack black and kate blanchett phenomenal the best like halloween like vibes that i think is just not talked about and should be talked about um but yeah that is the first shelf um horror store why did i even forget about that one that is such a phenomenal book by grady hendrix if you've not read horror store it takes place in basically what is an ikea store but they never say it and it is it starts out kind of silly and it ends really terrifying love it so we're gonna move down to the second shelf this is the red book so up here were my black uh is the black horror bookshelf this is the red horror bookshelf so here again i haven't read a whole lot but um of the ones that i have read the troop obvious favorite very wonderful um very terrifying um Tunnel of Bones and Bridge of Souls is actually the second and the third book in um, Victoria Schwab's series. Um, the first book is City of Ghosts, which I listened to an audiobook, which is why I don't have a physical copy. Phenomenal. So spooky for a middle grade. Loved it. Really loved it. Razorblade Tears. I just did a vlog on that. Loved that book. That is a crime thriller, not necessarily horror, but super good nonetheless there is ruth ware's turn of the key haven't read it yet uzumaki loved it it is a graphic novel by junji ito many of you are very familiar and then i've got my little paul tremblay corner um i've only read let's see head full of ghosts it was pretty good um i think i gave it a four stars um and then Coraline, of course behind my black philip funko pop 
So what I'm trying to do here is keep all my knickknacks at like a minimum so I can actually look at my books, um, which I'm really liking it. I'm really feeling like it's very relaxing and pleasing to the eye. So I'm going to sit down on my chair here and this is um, sort of my like, this is like my standalone rainbow shelf. I had a bunch of leftover horror books that I just didn't have enough of each color or I didn't have the space. So here's my Krampus Funko next to my Krampus book by Brahm. I haven't finished it. I need to finish it. I don't know why. I just, I guess was in a reading slump when I got it. Um, Mexican Gothic, super good. Loved every second of it by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Nightbooks is actually being made into a movie by Netflix. And then The Deep, Nick Cutter. Frickin' loved it, was amazing, very terrifying, not for sensitive bitches. I'm a sensitive bitch and it nearly tore, tore me up, tore me up. All right, moving down, another sign from Sinister Signs. It's a little ghosty that says scary tales, yeah. All right, and then moving downwards. Okay, so sorry. Um, got my little spooky cat that is broken because my cats my actual cats are terrible terrible creatures and knock everything over so i've got more junji ito here um i got these books they're like <laughs> they're like adult like goosebumps i got them from a horror convention um and this one is like a christmas themed one um and then the rest here i haven't really read um i've got oh there it goes <laughs> Um, I've got some comics here and I got this like little plastic spider that I got from the dollar store last Halloween. Love that. Okay, it's going to be a little dark here, so sorry, but down here are my Harry Potter books and various Harry Potter paraphernalia. There's Godric Gryffindor and then we've got my Twilight collection and more Harry Potter books. Um, this book, Harry Potter and the Classical World, that is a book that was um, written by my Latin professor in college. He signed it and it's super sweet. So this is actually available on Amazon, um, but he put a lot of freaking work into it. He has two PhDs. One of them is in classics, which is the study of Greek and Roman languages and culture. Um, and he, wrote a little inscription to me to Jay Carbon with appreciation and gratitude for the privilege of being one of your classics teachers, Richard A. Spencer. Um, he is the sweetest man in the world. And um, I gave him a run for his money, honestly. Sometimes I was a little jerk about it because I was so serious about my studies, um, but he really helped me out and I love him to death. Love you, Dr. Spencer. Okay, now we're at the top of the second shelf over here. Now the books that you're about to see are mostly going to be fantasy and sci-fi. Mostly fantasy. I'm not a big sci-fi person but let me get this um <laughs> leaf out of the way because I have plants. Up. Okay just kidding. I guess that leaf is staying there. Um so of this shelf I've got all my black horror books. Um, a lot of them at least. Horror fantasy. They're fantasy. So of my favorites here. Um, let me just draw your attention over here past this leaf. Um, even though this is facing outward, I think that the cover is really awesome. I actually kind of didn't like this book. I thought there was going to be way more witchcraft, like tr like traditional sort of like Anglo-Saxon witchcraft just because of the cover. Um, it's not. It's It's really not. And I did a vlog of it last year, but yeah. So that's what's behind this one. Um, I have a lot of Garth Nix on this um, shelf. Um, House of Salt and Sorrows, if you haven't read that. At first I wasn't sure I felt about it, but the last hundred pages really sold me on it. I'm pretty sure I gave it a four or, or five stars. Definitely at least four stars. Um, so pass this leaf again. Um, I have a lot of Kirsten White books. Love Kirsten White. Haven't read all of them. Um, Legendborn. Okay, so Lee Rael is my first, the first book I read of the Old Kingdom series, the Abhorsen like books by Garth Nix, and I just love this book. It has such a special place in my heart. And honestly, I found this um, at a secondhand store with its library binding, and it just feels so fitting because I read it when I was like 
gosh, in middle school, I think, maybe even younger. Um, the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, one of my favorite books of this year that it was just so beautiful. I really loved it. And now we're traveling down past the acorns and hi, Freddy. So more Fungo Pops, but this is going to be like my reddish purplish mm, something, something of that color <laughs> shelf. Um, so um, the Scorpio Races by Maggie Steve Otter is hands down one of my favorite books of all time. I just think Maggie Steve Otter's writing is so beautiful, so atmospheric and lyrical. I just, I love her writing. Um, moving through it, I have some Royal Doll books, um, some, um, oh, the Chronicles or the Spiderwick Chronicles. Love that book. Love the movie too. And then we've got more like middle grade, some Anne McCaffrey, um, Sabrina Spellman and Salem. And then moving down here is like the yellow shelf. Sorry for the weird lighting. It's like the sun is about to set. Um, of these books here, I would say that Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman is one of my favorites. I have another Madeline Miller book here. I'm reading Song of Achilles right now. I still haven't gotten to Circe. Um, there's a Sabriel book, also one of my favorite books. Um, so this book I got on a whim um, and I just think it's so fun looking and it's about like, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of, the plot kind of reminds me of Willy Wonka, but it's definitely about a candy factory. Um, and then we've got some, um, Richard Adams books. He wrote Watership Downs and I still have yet to finish that book. It's kind of a long one. Um, this little bunny was made by my best friend Madeline. Um, I think it's from Wallace and Gromit and the Wear Bunnies. <laughs> yep. Um, okay, moving down to my like green and blue shelf. Um, my cat is over here. What are you doing, Bubba? You just in the way. I'm going to push you now. Bye bye. Mm -mm. Okay. So just trying to get you so you can see this book. Okay. I have the fifth season up here, but I hated it. I read about 300 pages and I was like, I don't know why everyone's freaking the fuck out. I hate this book. Um, it was really boring. That's all I can say. Um, another Maggie Steve Otter book. So this is the second in a series, um, The Werewolves of Mercy Falls. This is very much, this series is very much like Twilight, but with werewolves. And it is fantastic. Love it. Still haven't read this second book though. I only read the first one. It's called Shiver and I read it on audiobook. So that's why I don't have the, the physical book. Ann Patchett's State of Wonder is hands down one of my favorite books of all time. It is beautiful. It is about a woman who goes to find her like lab partner in the Amazon. It is a contemporary fiction, but it is wonderful. Um, and then moving on, we've got more Kirsten White. Sorry, I'm shifting around here on the floor. Um, the Guinevere Deception was really good. To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo. It was okay. It was okay. Okay, so Argos is another book that is um, sort of like a retelling of a classical story. So Argos is the name of the dog of Odysseus from the Homeric epic, The Odyssey. I really liked this book. I will say that not a lot happens in it, but I like dogs and I like The Odyssey. So I really enjoyed that. Um, behind this blue book here, we've got Aragon, Spinning Silver. If you've not read Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik, you're missing out big freaking time. This is such a fantastic book. I love it so much. And I'm going to show you in a second the um, two books that I bought for $95 collectively that are special editions of Spinning Silver and Uprooted. Both books by her. The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. This one I gave a four star. I really liked it, but it's definitely like typical YA. Um, it's very atmospheric though, and it is about witches. Or, well, anyway, I won't get into it, but yeah. It's really good. And of course, who doesn't love Aragon? And if you don't love Aragon, I don't know what to tell you right now. Okay, so we're getting 
So we're getting to like the lower levels here. So if I'm at a weird angle, I'm sorry. Um, so up here I have my blue and greenish books. So here is the two special editions of Spinning Silver and Uprooted that I got from Illumicrate. And it was absolutely $95 because one, it's shipped from the UK. Two, it's like, it's gorgeous. I'm not going to pull it out now, but I will later if you guys want me to. Um, and then we've got more Garth Nix, Age of Witches by Louisa Morgan. Louisa Morgan is a fantastic writer. If you have ever read any of her books, I, you know what I mean. And we've got some other books here that I just haven't even gone around to. A lot from like Owl Crate Boxes. Rules for Visiting by Jessica Francis Kane is a fantastic book. It is a contemporary fiction. It's about a girl, or rather a woman, who sort of has never been very good about keeping friendships and she's really into her plants. Um, it's a fantastic book and it gave me all the feels. I highly recommend it. Okay, and then behind that we have more middle grades. I've got The Phantom Toll Booth, which is hands down one of my favorite books of all time. If you've never read it, you're wrong. Um, just kidding, you should read it though. Um, Baron the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. Fantastic book. I have all three of this series and I need to read the third, but the first two are phenomenal. Love it. Love it so much. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really, that's it for these shelves. Okay. So these are what the shelves look like all on their own. I've got minimal knickknacks and I really sort of plan to keep it that way. Um, yeah, I really love them. I don't know why the camera tilts like that. So sorry, but it's looking very neat, very agreeable to my eyeballs. So I did end up um, fixing the shelf out here. Excuse the lighting, but I just thought I'd show you really quickly. I did color code them a little bit. I'm just going to step around some cat toys. So this is a shelf of white books. I didn't even realize I had this many white books. But of this shelf, some of my favorites are, of course, the Nevernight and God's Grave. Um, books. Um, I believe Dark Dawn is on the next shelf, but The Once and Future Witches, if you have not read that by Alex E. Harrow, um, you're missing out. It's really, it's amazing. It's made me cry, made me weep, all the feelings. Um, and then I've got an Ann Patchett book up there that I have yet to read, but I really love Ann Patchett as we already discussed. Um, moving down, I've got some, oh, got some Shel Silverstein. What a throwback, huh? Okay. Moving down to another shelf of black books. Um, so we've got Dark Dawn over here because Jay Kristoff is a must. Um, we've got some Patrick Rothfuss. My boyfriend likes these books a little more than I, I do, but he is convinced that I will like the second book way more than the first book, and I'm willing to give it a try. Um, I got this sign from, gosh, where did I get it from? Raven Book Club something, Book Coven? I'll have to find it, but I'll, I'll look, link it in the stories, or the caption below. Um, oh, this is another Louisa Morgan book. Fantastic. This book I have read, and I really loved that book. I'm still trying to get to Anne Rice's The Witching Hour. I must have started it a million times and just cannot get through the first third of the book, and I don't know why. The Library of the Unwritten is about a library in hell, and it sounds awesome, but the book itself is kind of meh. I don't know. It's her debut book, and I think she will flourish and grow as a writer. Just this one wasn't my favorite. Um, the Secret History by Donna Tart. Everyone seems to love this book. When I first read it, I thought it was very boring and um, annoying. Um, but it is atmospheric and it is cozy and it is very like rainy afternoon sort of vibes. I will eventually read it again just so I can figure out if I actually really like it. I did read it while I was like halfway through a reading slump, so there's that. Terry Goodkind. Does anyone read Terry Goodkind? I read Wizard's First Rule, and there was a show called The Seeker that was supposed to be modeled after the, these books. I love the show, and I love the first book, but there are like 18 books in this series, and I just haven't gotten through them. 
So this next shelf here is like blue and green. Um, Discovery of Witches, I know it's like blowing up right now because of the show. I really loved the first book. It's very much like Twilight, except instead of vampire and human, it's vampire and witch. Um, Serpent and Dove, loved Serpent and Dove. Um, the Midnight Library, everyone loved. I thought it was very good, but it was a four star for me. It wasn't like a blow it out of the water five star for me. Um, another Sylvia Moreno Garcia book that I will get to eventually. Did anyone read Miss Piggle Wiggle growing up? Because if you didn't, I'm so sorry for you because she is magical and I loved her so much. You should read it anyway. I don't care how old you are. I bought this book recently, so that's how much I love Miss Piggle Wiggle. Actually, this one is Missy Piggle Wiggle, so this is like her niece, I think. The series continues, but if you have not read any Miss Piggle Wiggle, pick up the originals. So this shelf is like the purple and pink books. I've got like a J.R.R. Tolkien's like compendium of like monsters here, a special edition of Throne of Glass, which I have not read, Sorcery of Thorns, fuck that book. Um, everyone loved it. I thought it was so bad, just not great. Um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't like it. Um, let's see. Um... I don't know that I've read a lot of these books. Oh, definitely Matilda, of course. Love Matilda. Tessa Dare. I haven't read this book, but I've read a lot of her books. And um, Tessa Dare is like a Regency era um, sort of series um, romance, series of romances. And um, they're fantastic. The banter is fantastic. The steam is steamy. And yeah, really love it. Tessa Dare is great. And then move my giant salt lamp. Um, honestly, that's it of note. Everything else is just sort of here because of color. I mean, I liked these books. Like, I read Wild, um, but nothing life-changing. And, yeah, that's it. And that's it. Those are the books. Um, those are not all of my books, but they are the ones that look the nicest. And I do read a lot of these and have read a lot of these and do plan on reading a lot of those. The other ones that I have, they're like nonfiction or like old school books that I just keep for sentimental purposes. Um, I studied Latin and Greek in college and most of high school and I had planned to go to grad school for it. So I have a lot of like ancient Latin like texts and like study books and I just refuse to get rid of them because they make me feel smart. <laughs> um, and then I have a lot of cookbooks. I am a hoarder of cookbooks and even though I don't really cook much anymore, I did and I just think cookbooks are beautiful and I love reading all the stories. I also love a lot of like children's books that I have. So those are going to be shown another time. They're not, they're like not stacked pretty. I, I keep looking over there because that's where the shelf is and it's it's not a fun time to look at honestly um but otherwise i hope you enjoyed this little like book rearrangement and small book tour let me know down in the comments if you like arranging your books a certain way if you are more author more genre more color coded i wanted to try the color coding because i've never done it before i've always been a very strict like author and genre person but um it's just, I spend a lot of time taking pictures for my bookstagram and I know that's really shallow, but um, I do. And it just makes for better pictures. And I don't have any problems finding books, weirdly enough. And aside from like the aesthetics of like, you know, for bookstagram, actually looking at my shelves like this is so much more pleasing to my eye. Um, and the lack of knickknacks. I had to put away like a giant box full of knickknacks and I still have to figure out what to do with them. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments below how you like to arrange your books. Um, but other than that, I hope you enjoy this video. Hit that like button down below if you did. It really helps my channel. Hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you always know when I've got good things coming to you. Bye y'all. Um.